Charity Navigator was formed, officially went live in 2002. Uh, we were formed by uh, Pat and uh, Marion Dugan as an organization to evaluate charities to enable donors to more intelligently support the nonprofit sector. So essentially to evaluate the performance of the nonprofits so that when people gave money, they would be able to do so to organizations that were high performance organizations. There was also an element of looking to weed out the, the good from the bad, or the bad from the good, and enable people to avoid giving money to poorly run or actually even badly run organizations. So our role is to be an independent evaluator of the nonprofit sector. We're here as an advocacy organization for the donors. So for donors who want to make gifts to support philanthropy and philanthropic efforts through the nonprofit sector, our goal is to evaluate the charities, to promote intelligent giving, and in turn to facilitate a partnership between the donors and the charities they support to eliminate and reduce some of the world's most challenging problems. Yeah. So the first part to the first, the way we evaluate organizations is to look at the financial performance of the organization at, at a first level. There are essentially three levels of evaluation, two of which we are performing today, the third we are developing right now. So the first is financial performance and how well does the organization perform financially? How much money goes to the program that they or, or their mission? To actually, what are they devoted to? How much goes to administrative expenses? And then how much goes to fundraising and bringing in, bringing in revenue? So we look at different elements of that and the ratios of those expenses. The second element is accountability and transparency. Is it run, is, is it a transparent organization? How well do they run? Do they have good governance practices? Do they have a privacy policy? Do they have a, an independent board of directors? Are they having regular meetings? Are the minutes from those meetings actually documented and made publicly available to the donors and the public? The third element is looking at outcomes or results reporting. This is something that is in process that will be part of the future evaluations that Charity Navigator is working on. Charity Navigator has analysts that look at, they look in depth at the IRS 990 forms, so the primary form for evaluation that we are, we're basing our evaluations on is a tax form that is filed by every, every 501c3 nonprofit organization. We look at those forms and evaluate the financials uh, that are represented in those forms. Our analysts do that work. Those are the people that do that work. Then that work is then compared to audit reports from independent auditors, the actual charity's website, and often interaction that we will have directly with the charity, whether it's through email or telephone. So the analysts are, we have a, a formalized analyst training program, or in other words, there's an analyst track within the organization that takes about three years to go from being a junior analyst to a senior analyst. These are people that we're hiring. They're not necessarily, I don't, I don't have a specific background that I could give you on that. We have um, a wide variety of people coming from different areas in the, uh, in the uh, sector. I, don't think we have any CPAs, but we have actually had people leave the organization and go into a more of an accounting profession. If you think of the work of one of our analysts, they look at more tax forms than most tax uh, accountants do uh, in that they're reviewing on average. You know, we're, we're actually updating up to a thousand charities a month, and that means there are over a thousand 990s being looked at on a monthly basis uh, within Charity Navigator. The criteria really is looking at where the money is going and how much, how much is going into, in, in the actual, in the tax form itself, there's a breakout of where the, where the money is, where the revenue is going and where the expenses are going. And so when you look at the, essentially the profit loss of an organization, you can see that they devoted X percent to their programs and they will define their program. Each organization will have a different set of programs, a food bank, 
has a different set of programs than a museum or a, a homeless shelter. But those, each of those organizations will define their programs and they'll tell you how, much, how many dollars go to that out of the total dollars of revenue that they receive. And then you compare that to how much went into their administrative expenses and paying for their office space and paying their staff. Uh, and all those numbers are actually available to us, so we're able to evaluate that. And then we run averages for different areas in the sector have different cost structures. So it's not a one-size-fits-all evaluation. Um, I mentioned uh, food shelters, for example, or food banks. Uh, they tend to have lower uh, administrative costs and can devote more to programs because they're being donated food. So they don't actually, they're not a cash business. Museums, on the other hand, have a very high um, operating cost in that they have very expensive artwork and they're running, they have more security guards, they have more staff associated with that, they may have insurance costs for the, uh, the artwork that they have. And so the, the ratios that we use to evaluate a museum are entirely different than those we would use for a food bank. And what we've done over the years, so we've been in existence almost 15 years, you, you, you begin to understand and see the, the averages and what is a well-run organization. And so we've been able to ascertain some of these amounts through, through our own experience over the years and then through input that we receive from advisory councils from within the sector.